if you really want to know where cars evol are evolving, you shouldn't be looking at cars or driving or roads. You should be thinking about the nature of money. What's up, people? So today, I'm going to tell you where cars are evolving. Or at least I'm going to tell you my opinion, or whatever I just came up with in the shower this morning, because it's the internet and everybody just says whatever they want anyway. Or do I actually know? So, where are cars evolving to? I hear everybody freak out, right? Car guys. Oh, we're going to get rid of the gas engine. Oh, the fun's going to be gone. You can't work on anything. It's going to be autonomous cars, electric cars. Oh, everybody loses their mind, right? Well, I think the first thing is, you know, the internal combustion engine isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And the reason I say that is because fuel can be stored and transported anywhere in the world and kept there for quite some time. You can't do that with electricity so easily. First of all, you need a grid, like wires going all over creation to get it somewhere. You need to produce it, and then how do you produce it? Is it nuclear, is it wind, is it solar, is it you know coal burning? What is it, right? And the other thing is you can't store mass quantities of electricity for a long time. Hello, you'd have to have giant battery banks somewhere. That's not how that works. So if you have a grid, like in the United States, you have to produce your electricity effectively based upon demand. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere, or like the, you know, the desert, or the wilderness of Mongolia or something, electric cars probably not going to cut it so well, right? And uh, no, I don't want to take this conversation to that whole place of like, are electric cars better for the environment? Or is this better for the environment? Or uh, that, that can be a topic for another discussion. So if you guys want to comment on it, let's, let's stay on point. But anyway, so is it going to be electric cars? Is it going to be gas? It, it's going to be both. It's going to be all of the above. Because depending on where you are in the world, you have different needs. And I think it's going to, they're all going to evolve to try to be more efficient. Um, and the big thing right now that people talk about is autonomous cars. Or the nature of you driving less. Now, that's got something big to do with it. And the reason that's got something big to do with it doesn't have to do with people like being lazy, it has to do with insurance companies having a lot of power and the nature of how politicians generally hide behind safety to push any kind of policy they want uh, because that's their easiest way to scare people in doing things. But autonomous cars do have a lot of merit. I'll be frank, I get really bored driving on the highway because 65 or 70 miles an hour is insanely slow and um, I get really bored and boredom is just as bad a thing as somebody being a distracted driver, <laughs> frankly. So I'd rather just, you know, cruise control is a nice thing because you kick it on and then you just have to steer and pay attention and situational awareness. And the United States, and I'm digressing here, but United States, nobody knows anything about lane discipline. lane discipline. If you're slow, move over to the right. You pass on the left. Hello. Why aren't we teaching this anymore? I would really appreciate people would enforce that. It would make our highways safer. Sidebar over. Anyway. So autonomous cars are a thing and it could go somewhere. But the fact of the matter is they're not perfect. They can glitch out. And then you get into those moral implications of like, does it kill the crowd of people or does it kill the driver? You know what I'm saying? So lots of arguments there. And I think generally speaking, people, and most especially Americans, uh, we pride ourselves in our individuality and personal liberty to make our own decisions and do what we're doing. Plus, this is a culture of the automobile. We enjoy driving. We enjoy our car. So that's, that's going to fight that for a while. But if you really want to know where cars evol are evolving, you shouldn't be looking at cars or driving or roads. You should be thinking about the nature of money and what it actually is. <laughs> so here's where I'm going with that. Do you own your car? Should be the most important question for you all to ponder right now. Do you own your car? Or do you have a loan on it? Or are you leasing it? Now if you have a loan on it, you might own a portion of it and you're making payments and interest and losing money depreciation potentially. And a bank largely owns it. If you're leasing it, you don't own it. That's basically long-term renting it, okay? 
And some people will do that because they think it's cheaper than the depreciation and for whatever reason they want a new car or write off or whatever, or they're too afraid of fixing it and they've been frightened into thinking they have to. Some people lease them. There's not that many people that just outright own cars and keep them up. I, I like owning older cars just because I don't like losing money to things like depreciation and interest. But that's where it's evolving. So you gotta look at countries, world leaders, power individuals, power hungry individuals, and money. So for all you young people, I ask you, what is money? What is it? You have pieces of paper potentially in your wallet with a number on it, and they represent some kind of value at, at a certain time in the history of a nation. That's it. And that value of that piece of paper with a number on it at any given time is worth X in other countries based upon their relationship with the nation you're in. That's it. The truth of the matter is, way back when, nations used to have what was called the gold standard. Which means, if a nation had money, that was actually like a coupon or a promissory note that you could turn in for its X value in actual gold. And countries did that. But then from the world wars and after the world wars, countries started going off the gold standard. And the United States finally went off on, I can't remember, forgive me, 60, 70, something like that. And it's, that's not such an important topic right now. But nowadays, money is literally just a concept. There's nothing there. It's just based upon whatever nation you're in says it's worth something. If they want to print more money, like literally just print more money and stick it out there, then the value of what you have goes down. If the relationship of your nation changes in some way with other nations, the value of your monetary unit will go up or down compared to other ones. Uh, and if you're such a powerful player, and these people exist, that you can jack with a country and their people and cause a wreak havoc and cause a mess, you can theoretically devalue their monetary unit and invest in it. And then when it goes up, you make money or you have more value. There are people that just jack with currencies. You know those speculators? So the evolution of the car has a lot to do with that. Because if you own something, you have power. If you own land, if you have access to natural resources, if you own your own cars or transportation, if you own animals or cattle, livestock, if you own you know, uh, supplies, metals, paper, you have some kind of power. If you don't own anything, you don't have a whole lot of power. You don't have a whole lot of bargaining chips. So if cars can be evolved, and I don't say if cars evolve, I say evolved because yes, I mean that that can be influenced and manipulated. To where that the mass populace leases cars, it doesn't own them for one reason or another, maybe because they can't afford it anymore, and that's the only means, or maybe because they get made to where laws change and you can't work on your own car anymore, or the aftermarket changes, or safety laws change. Remember the whole thing about politicians always hiding behind and using safety to scare people into doing things? What I'm saying is, if you don't own your own car, you have less power. So the, the place where cars are evolving to, and people have said, is like ride sharing, where you don't own your own transportation, you buy in, that is largely where it's evolving. But it's not gonna be that way across the board because the wealthy can still own their own cars and buy what they want and do what they want and have that personal liberty. But other socioeconomic classes may not be able to. And the thing that's interesting is if you were in control of owning lots of vehicles for people to get around in, and large populace of people didn't own cars at all anymore, I'm not even talking leasing, like you don't even have a car, you just call for it and 
there it is, and you get in and go somewhere. You can also help guide and direct people where you want them to go. If you want them to see a part of a town or not see part of a town or how you want them to travel. It's a way to influence them as groups of people and individuals and classes. It doesn't matter if they're autonomous or not. They very likely may be because they can just pick people up. You can use an app. It'll be like Uber, but with no people. <laughs> so that's where I think cars are evolving to. And frankly, I think in the future, I don't know how long, I think lower socioeconomic classes aren't going to be able to own their own car at all. I think it's going to be really hard having a garage, working on it, driving anywhere. And I think that is going to come about because of a great many factors from insurances to politicians to the changing of the dollar, wages, people's life, health, all of those things. And the reason I think that is because that is the one place that makes the most sense for very, very powerful people to help cars evolve so that they can have more power. This is just my opinion. I'm not conspiracy theorizing. I'm not trying to say cause an enemy against this, that, or the other thing. I'm just saying I think I have a pretty good grasp on people <laughs> and groups of people and power and transportation in the world to know that's where I think that's going. So I think that's really lame. I don't like that. Because I'm a pretty typical old school American and I like personal liberties and having a cool car and working on a car and expressing myself that way and having fun. And I think a lot of you are that way too. So I guess I would say if you don't want the future to turn out like that, whether it's gonna or not, I would say then the best thing you can do is own your own car. Even if you just drive some ragged out thing from the 1980s and you maintain it, it looks pretty good and it's not fashionable anymore or whatever and you think it's great, then I think it's great too. That's totally cool with me. And I like driving older things like that and maintaining them. And in many ways, maintaining a car for a long, long time and keeping it in good, fine uh, workmanship and all is environmentally friendly. Because think about how much how much resources, how much time, how much material from mining ores to making polymers to recycling or recycling or crushing or throwing away an old car to making a new car, all the heat, all the chemicals. Think about the impact it has of actually producing a car on the planet. Whereas just keeping one up, if you go through a new car every five years or 10 years, but if you maintain one for 30 and keep it efficient or maybe even switch it over to electric or something like that, that could theoretically be more environmentally friendly. And guess what? You stay and still own your personal property and kind of maintain that personal liberty, which I think is pretty darn cool. So that's it, guys. That's where I think cars are evolving. I think they're going to be tried to be taken away from people of classes that can't afford it. And everybody's, they're going to, we all might have to buy into ride sharing. And I think it's really lame and I don't like it. Maybe I'll become Amish. That's starting to look up. <laughs> anyway, guys, just my thought. Comment below. Let's keep it nice. Everybody likes to call me everything from a conservative to a communist to a socialist to, I don't know, a douche. <laughs> just food for thought. Let's talk about it. Hope you guys will like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.